Hello everybody, I am back again with another network switch. This time, it's from Netgear. All right, so I was looking for a managed 16 port network switch and I found this Netgear GS716T 200 NAS. So as I usually do when I search for a new device or do anything on Amazon, I spend hours reading reviews, comparing models and all that good stuff. And I came across this one and I was a little curious because I found it of all places on walmart.com for $49, brand new, not refurbished, brand new. And I thought, well, what's the catch? There's gotta be a catch. And some of it is, this is an older unit. This isn't brand new uh, as far as a newly released model. This is actually from, uh, the best I can tell, somewhere around 2011, 2012. Uh, it's a little hard to find some info on this because I think, uh, because it is a little older of a unit, but it's very heavy. And this is, this is a business grade type of switch. This usually isn't something the average homeowner would use, but for $50, <coughs> pardon me, what I found out there uh, in that price range uh, was pretty competitive. And like I said, I think this is an, an older model. Uh, it obviously is brand new. This is not a refurb unit. So I looked around on it to see if I could find some kind of a manufacturing date and I don't see one. But when I look back at the references to the literature, uh, user manual online and stuff, it's, it's from, like I said, somewhere around the 2011, 2012 range. But it is a gigabit switch. It's a smart switch, so you can uh, log into it. It is managed, so you can get in there and change all the settings, and you have complete control over it. It is 16 ports, and we have these two SFP ports. And uh, what you do, you buy these little Ethernet adapters that plug in here. And I know I'm simplifying it, but you can basically use fiber uh, to connect uh, your uplink to this switch if you want to go that far. So that's what these extra little ports here are for. And then there's a little reset switch right here. You usually use like a paper clip if you need to uh, blow it out if all your settings are messed up. You just need to reset the switch. Like I said, this thing is very heavy. Uh, some of the reviews said it has an internal fan. I'll have to plug it in and see. I don't see one, but I'll find out here in a moment. All right, so I'm going to plug it in for the first time. There it is, powering up. And I do not hear a fan at all, so I don't know if it's, if there's one in there, if it's thermostatically controlled. Maybe it has to heat up a little bit before the fan comes on. I plan on popping the top of this thing off anyway and taking a look inside, so that will definitely tell me if there's a fan or not. But anyway, there's the front panel. Like I said, it is a gigabit switch. Uh, it's really massive overkill for what I want to do, but again, for $50, uh, I don't see how I could go wrong. The cover is now off, so the mystery has been solved. There is no internal cooling fan. I did see people complaining about the fan noise, uh, but this particular rev of this model, this may be a later one where they've made some improvements, uh, does not have an internal cooling fan. There is a very large heat sink there. Over here is the power supply. This is your transformer voltage regulator that drops the 120 volt AC down to a DC current for this circuit board. I looked for a date code. I didn't see anything really definitive in there trying to get a clue again as to when this was manufactured. There is a number right here. It's 20120621, so maybe June 21st of uh, 2012, maybe. Don't know. There, so it's all back together, and uh, I know I keep talking about the date code, and I know it really doesn't matter when it was manufactured as long as it works. Why, wow, you can see my greasy fingerprints all over there. But uh, as long as it works, who really cares? when it was manufactured. And the way I found it, I was looking actually at eBay and I found a used one, uh, used one of these for like $40. So I thought, well, what is it normally? What is the normal retail price? Because a lot of times old uh, switch gear, uh, network hardware, sometimes it's really cheap. P 
people clean out data centers and they just they just sell this stuff for pennies on the dollar. So anyway, uh, I looked and found it on, like I said, Walmart for $49.99. Everywhere else I looked, Amazon, uh, Newegg, it was all $139. I saw it at $200 in a couple places for the exact same model number. So now I'll go ahead and get some stuff connected to it, move some data back and forth, just sort of see what uh, the real world looks like. I don't really expect anything exciting. It is just really a gigabit switch, but it'll be interesting to see the uh, software interface uh, for controlling the switch. And it is rack mountable. It comes with some little rubber feet there for the bottom. And here's all the mounting hardware you need to make it rack mountable. And then these are the little side brackets. Now, for all you boys and girls watching at home, this is not the proper way to mount the switch. It would normally be in a rack horizontally and not facing vertically. You do not want your switch ports facing upwards because you can get dirt, bugs, water, whatever can fall down in there. So I have it this way temporarily because I have to move this computer out of the way here to make room for it on the tabletop and I need to change the length of some of these cables, these ethernet cables. So again, disclaimer, this is only a temporary setup just while I do some testing. Included with the switch are two DVDs. One of them has uh, some, let's see here, NMS 200 network management software. I'm not real sure what that is. I'll have to take that out and fire it up. Oh, there might actually be some instructions on the back here. Okay, yep, how to install it. The next one here has uh, the user manual, copy of the user manual, and there's some software that helps you with the installation. There's a smart switch discovery tool, which I already have on my system. I got that uh, from Netgear for another switch I reviewed. Basically, it finds the IP address of your switch and allows you to easily log into it so you can start the configuration. And that's sort of what this little startup guide or instructions, uh, this is what it tells you, basically, how to get the system going. And it's pretty good has everything you need to get your system rolling. There's this really nice and very large poster. I'm not going to try and unfold it here. It's, it's just huge, but it talks about all the different ProSafe Pro -safe switches from Netgear and a clue as to the age or when the switch came out right there, summer, winter, 2011. So that kind of gives you an idea. I'm not complaining at all, not disappointed at all either. I think it's a great switch. After you get the switch powered up, you want to use the Netgear Switch Discovery Tool software, which you can download from the Netgear website. It finds the IP address of the switch, so you can type that into your browser and then uh, begin accessing the various screens for the switch, which uh, this is what you're looking at right here now. So you can see you can log into your switch, give it a name, give it a location. You can see across the top here the various tabs for switching, quality of service, security, monitoring, maintenance, and all that good stuff. And one of the first things I did uh, after I got the switch powered up was go to the uh, firmware page on the Netgear website. So you find the firmware, uh, the latest update, I should say, and you can download that and get that installed. And uh, there are several uh, support articles, as you can see, that show you how to get the uh, firmware installed. And this page shows uh, the various firmware versions that are available. Now mine came with 5.0.3.5. So just to make sure I could install uh, the firmware properly, I just went to the next version up. Sometimes you have to be careful that uh, you can't jump too many versions, but uh, this switch didn't seem to matter. So I ultimately ended up all the way at the top there with 5.4.2.30, which is the latest. As for testing, I just tried to do some real-world moving of data back and forth through the switch between a couple servers, uh, along with regular network traffic, uh, a lot of data going back and forth from my uh, camera systems. And uh, the speeds were pretty much what I see through any other gigabit switch that I've got. Nothing uh, exciting one way or the other. So the performance was as expected. All right, so I've been playing with the switch for a while. No issues moving data back and forth. It performs the same as any other Ethernet, uh, or I should say gigabit Ethernet switch I've got, managed or unmanaged. 
Uh, 50 bucks, like I said, from Walmart, you can't hardly beat it. So if you're looking for a managed switch that you want to play around with and learn a little bit how the settings all interact and work with each other, this would be a good starter switch. It's very affordable. And I also like the way you have these SFP ports that are uplinks to other switches. So you basically move your data between switches with these ports and you buy these little uh, transceivers here. These things are... Uh, they're all over the map price-wise depending upon what speeds you get but they plug right in here and then you would connect the Ethernet or uh, if it was an Ethernet module you would plug your Ethernet cable your uplink cable or this one here is fiber so you would plug your fiber into that and then uh, the other end would go into the module on the other switch so again like I said 50 bucks can't hardly beat it this is Chris with Overclockers Club thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe